the students for coming out to read today. Um, it's really tough to get up in front of people and speak and share your work and share what's going on in your mind. And I'd really like again to give a nice hand to the students who came up. <laughs> High school to run some poetry workshops and read poetry, and this is getting me primed to do that. So, thank you all for coming out, especially my students, my students from this year and from past years. It's really nice. Uh, I, I, it is hard for someone to get up and read in public. It's not very easy at all, except if you don't pay attention to the audience and you just get involved in the language that you love to share with people. I'm going to read some poems from a couple of my books. I promise not to hold you too long. I didn't know I was going to do this, but many people ask me, where do we get ideas for our poetry? Where do poets get the inspiration? Uh, I have a poem here called Ars Poetica. That's the Latin term for the art of poetry, which was a, written in a series of letters or epistles by Horace, the first century BC Roman poet. And he gave the description of where poetry comes from and what it should include. It's basically everything you've heard here tonight, metaphor, simile, uh, creativity, alliteration, rhyme. This Ars Poetica has an epigraph by a Chilean poet, Vicente Widodo, a poeta es un pequeño dios, the poet is a little god. Where does poetry come from? It starts slowly, like a drop of rain kissing a tin roof the way a thrown stone skips across the surface of a pond, full of thought and purpose. A single letter written on a still blank page. One, then another, then another, until a word is formed, a phrase, a stanza flooding down from above. Ideas splashing together, slipping over eaves and beaded columns of meaning swallowed by a thirsty earth that later punctuates these run-on sentences with a single blossom here and there. Beauty that makes sense only when you step outside the house. Now, the, the beauty that we tend to overlook is always in front of us uh, in the most unlikely places. This is a poem about one of those places. It's entitled Patterson. Patterson, New Jersey, the school system there, is a place where I run poetry workshops once a month in, the, in a variety of the schools, either middle schools or high schools. This poem is about the first time I was at the East Side High School. You may have heard of that high school. It has a very uh, checkered, urban uh, reputation. Patterson. The Garden State Parkway leads north from South Jersey suburbs to that other world of city streets overflowing with no rhyme or reason. East Side High School looms as a multi-walled fortress with every door locked to keep the outside out. I enter the school behind a late student as another smokes a cigarette while opening the door from the inside. Though expected by the principal, I fear my assignment teaching poetry has begun as a subversive act. My four workshops are filled with teenagers far older than my middle age will ever be. A few have babies of their own at home. Others wait for scheduled interruptions in their education so they can serve a harsher sentence imposed by society. East Side isn't the typical place where I read poems and urge others to make their own worlds and words, but it is real. The poetry there is alive. It sits in front of me and squirms in its seat, waiting for the bell so it can spill like a waterfall from school. Every outburst and sigh ask me to hear the rhythms of other lives. Leaving at the end of my last class, I need no secret passageway to get out. All the doors are unlocked, and I see city streets being flooded with poetry that is incapable of ever drowning. 
Now that poetry that's incapable capable of ever drowning sometimes doesn't speak the same language I grew up with. I had the opportunity to uh, participate in a series of poetry workshops in the summer in Patterson about 10 years ago. It was for the students whose parents were not English speakers. Most of the students came from Spanish-speaking homes. Uh, there was one boy there who came from an Arabic-speaking home and another boy who came from a French-speaking home. But this was a program designed for young people in middle school to learn more about English by studying poetry. This poem was written after that two-week adventure. It's called Tongue Twisters. La poesía es vida. Poetry is life for 22 immigrant English as second language middle school students. For three hours each morning, they write about the homes left behind in Colombia, Nicaragua, Panama, Mexico. A two-week summer school in Patterson, New Jersey, where the Dominican Republic is not allowed to be spoken of in its foul-rich language of romance. La poesía es vida. When the students write some make Puerto Rico the 51st state, not with an act of Congress or a vote by the people of San Juan, but by language. Others tell of the Andes sliding into the Pacific off the coast of Chile, a tale of foreign magic translated for domestic use. La poesía es vida. It wears down the lead in their pencils and scorches the paper they write on. It rises like smoke, signaling new ways of saying what everybody knows without using any words at all. La poesía es vida. Now, <coughs> poetry um, can be a lifesaver, too. Uh, it is a lifesaver for the young people with whom I work and for myself. I've had an opportunity to live a very interesting life, make it this far. And uh, I wrote a poem that for me, it's very personal because it explains how poetry can be translated across cultures, across time. It's called Bamboo Viper. This poem is about my service in South Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Bamboo Viper. It was the length of my arm from fingertips to elbow, hidden beneath a leafy blanket covering a jungle trail in South Vietnam. We called him Johnny Two-Step as we humped the boonies on a missions that sought to search out and destroy the only humanity we had left. We had heard a GI could take just two steps if bitten by a bamboo viper before the venom snaking through him brought his war to an end. I don't know what made me look down before stepping into eternity, but I did. Something had tugged at my jungle fatigues, and I froze before fleeing back to my unit. I had avoided touching everything Vietnamese while in the country I had volunteered to fight for. After I came home, my poems reached out to offer understanding. I was still running three decades later, trying to outrace the serpents chasing me. Lee Nguyen, my Cambodian scout, was gone. Sal, my Cambodian lover, was gone. Nothing Vietnamese until a young woman smiled after I read my poetry in a suburban bookstore. She told me her mother was from Saigon, then shook my hand and said, thank you. Before I could run away, she hugged me for the decision I had made. She thanked me again for stepping into her mother's world in spite of the poison that lurked there. Thank you. Um, poetry is a lifesaver for everyone, especially the students. They love the three hours they have once a week where they can get out of a high school mode and sort of be the person they want to be, the artist they want to be, the creative individual, the person who is respected by others who want to be the same thing, just understood and accepted. The final poem I will share uh, is about a place I've never been. I've seen pictures.